In the words of Christian Cage, I am better than anyone from North Carolina, including that 16-time world champion, Ric Flair. Woo! Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your very, very late AEW Collision review. Christian Cage calling out Ric Flair, throwing some shade in the direction of Ric Flair and just like Christian used to say back in the day one more match <laughs> that's probably what Ric Flair wants after hearing this Ric Flair will he be able to sit there at his home 75 years old and be able to accept that Christian just said he's better than him probably not Ric Flair's probably broke open his oldest bottle of whiskey he's probably drinking it right now preparing for the comeback match this time will he fall asleep who knows I almost fell asleep watching AEW Collision, although it's not the worst AEW show. In fact, it's the best out of the three. Still doesn't make it great, but it's not that bad, let's be honest, it's really not. Although one of the worst things is CM Punk coming out and his constant pandering. We've seen him come out with all these different types of shorts, promoting different stuff. Tonight, he was promoting a striker's union, something to do with the entertainment world. He was promoting this and then on the back of his trunks, it looked like the LGBT colours. I'm not too sure if it was, but it definitely looked like a rainbow and he was promoting that and promoting some strikers union shit that doesn't really matter. But yeah, CM Punk, you do what you do. Plus he was getting booed tonight. CM Punk, not very popular in North Carolina. Hell, maybe he buried Ric Flair as well. Maybe he had some negative things to say about Ric Flair. But we start off the show with Ricky Starks coming to the ring. Absolute Ricky Starks. And you know what? Ricky Starks does look like a star. You've got to give him it. You compare Ricky Starks to other people in this company, like, look at Ricky Starks and then compare him to, like, a Darby Allen or an Orange Cassidy. Jesus Christ, this guy actually, they call him the Pebble, but he's a lot closer to the Rock than those guys will ever be. Anyway, he gets told that he's got a 30-day suspension, but he's not worried because he's applied for a manager's license and he is going to be here for the next 30 days. I mean, surely if you were suspended... You wouldn't be suspended from wrestling, you would be like suspended from the building, you'd be suspended in general. But they had some sort of clause where he was only suspended from in the ring. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. It's like back in the day if Austin attacked McMahon, McMahon would like bar him from the, from the arena. He wouldn't bar him from wrestling. How does Baron Austin for wrestling protect McMahon? And how does Baron... Um, Ricky Starks protect uh, Ricky Steamboat. Not that he was here tonight, but anyway, that's I don't understand it. But Ricky Starks cuts a promo, basically saying the blood is on CM Punk's hands. He said he can live with his L. Can CM Punk live with what happened to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat? Because he blames CM Punk. He says CM Punk's the one that brought Ricky's old ass out there into the ring. And whether you're 30, 50 or 70, every man needs to pay for their consequences. So, um, or pay for their actions even. There, there's consequences to pay for their actions. Shit, guys, it's late. Anyway, good promo. Decent promo to start the show. I like Ricky Starks. Then we got the Acclaimed. The Acclaimed came out, cut a decent promo. The Acclaimed uh, made fun of Mitch McConnell, made fun of a couple of other people. Yeah, I mean, the, the Acclaimed promos are okay. The, the raps are decent. I prefer John Cena, Doctor of Fugonomics, but the Acclaimed do decent raps. They beat the Iron Savages, two big guys from Ring of Honor. Just looks like a tag team that was destined to to fail. I mean, <laughs> this team's going nowhere. Uh, we then got Lexi Nair backstage with Jay White and the Bullet Club Gold. Lexi Nair's pretty hot. I'll give her that. That's probably one of the best things AEW has done. Getting Lexi Nair screen time. That's what you need. I mean, you need... Unless you've got someone like a Michael Cole backstage or a Coachman or a Mean Gene, someone that's actually good, then if you can't get a good guy backstage to do like the interviews, then just get a hot chick. It really is as simple as that. Easy way out. Anyway, she's pretty hot, and, and I kind of, I like the Bullet Club Gold, they're growing on me. They're growing on me, especially, especially the guns, top guns. I think that they've improved a lot since they broke up from Billy and they got away out of their dad's shadow. 
Speaking of their bad shadow, we'll talk a little bit about Brock Anderson tonight, but I mean, Brock Anderson, what a waste of a fucking wrestler. Uh, up next, we had match number two Mercedes Martinez and Diamante versus Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander. I mean, you want eye candy, then close your eyes, don't look at this match, because there is none. Diamante kind of looks a bit like Tessa Blanchard, but like a really short and ugly version of her. That's what I noticed. Anyway, Mercedes and Diamante won the match. Who cares? Then we've got Lexi Nair. She's backstage with a distraught Tony Storm. Tony Storm is in a Victorian robe. She was going all like medieval Victorian style. I don't know, 1640s here. I don't know what she's doing. I don't get it. She talks about how all the women in AEW are backstabbers. But she says she can trust Soraya. Uh, then Lexi Nair brings up the fact that Shida has also booked her place in the match. It's like, well, no shit. She's a fucking champion, you dumb bitch. I mean, of course she's in the match. Oh, uh, like the near, she was... Because uh, Tony Storm brought up the fact that Soraya won to book her place. But then Lexi Nail says, well, she does booked her place too. But of course she does in the match. She's the champion defending the belt. Whatever. Whatever. And the last match is between Britt Baker and the Bunny, and it's like, come on, it's so predictable, AEW. You just know there's no fucking chance the Bunny wins that. No way in hell. I would bet anything. Anyway, up next, we've got Samoa Joe taking on Andrew Everett. No idea who Andrew Everett is, but he gets beaten about two seconds, so it doesn't matter. He doesn't matter. Then Samoa Joe grabs the mic. He says that CM Punk likes to call himself the real world champion, but he's just a real bitch. And uh, Samoa Joe wants to face Punk, I guess, and all in for the Ring of Honor World Champion. So Punk versus Joe, I guess we're going to get to see it. Christian then comes out. Christian is with his dinosaur, Luchasaurus. He runs down Michael Jordan, says that he isn't the best basketball player of all time. Then he claims that he's better than Ric Flair. And he insinuates that everyone from North Carolina is related. They're all sleeping with each other. It's all incest in North Carolina. Uh, he then says he doesn't care how important the championship is to Darby Allen because Christian is building a legacy, whereas Darby Allen's too busy doing ollies in the skate park. He then says if he keeps pursuing the TNT championship, he'll make Darby Allen 100% dead inside because Darby Allen says that he paints his half his face because he's half dead inside. I thought it was a really good line for Christian. Christian's phenomenal on the mic. Really enjoying Christian's run here on Collision. The fact that you get Christian on Collision makes it better than Dynamite alone. Out came, out came Anne Anderson. Anne Anderson was trying to talk trash. Anne Anderson says that this is Greensboro, North Carolina, horseman country. Horseman country, my ass. The horsemen were overrated. It was Ric Flair and a couple of old guys. That's all it was. Christian says that he's going to offer Arn the open challenge. Arn says if, if he was 20 years younger, he'd slide in and hit a spine buster on Christian's narrow ass and walk out with the title. But instead, he sends his son Arn in. Arn Anderson comes in, he takes on Luchasaurus. Ten seconds into the match, we go to a break. We come back for the break, then ten seconds later, Luchasaurus wins. This was basically just to have a match during the fucking break. What a waste of time. And I'm not saying Arn Ander uh, Brock Anderson deserves time because he sucks. But like, what was the point of this? Seriously, they brought him out just to have... A, like, 95% of the match, I'm not even joking, 95% of the match happened during the commercial break. Dumb. Fucking dumb. Just a waste of fucking time. Uh, after the match, Darby Allen came out. He hit Luchasaurus with a skateboard. Then he made a... I don't know. Some, said something very gay. He says, oh, dinosaurs have been around for thousands of years, but have you ever had a skateboard rammed up your ass? And it's like, yo, Darby, just calm down with that skateboard, mate. Seriously. If you want to go home into your little basement and ram it up your own ass, then that is absolutely fine. But let's not be ramming anything up any asses on AEW TV. Because I have to watch this shit, right? And I don't want to see Darby Allen. I don't want to see a dinosaur. And I don't want to see a skateboard. Some freeway freaky action. Screw that shit. Anyway, Miro came out next. Uh, Powerhouse Hobbs is here. He calls out Miro. He says that the next chapter in his book is Redemption. Miro comes out. He gets attacked from behind. And then we have... I don't know what happened next, but... Hobbs put a book on the chest of Miro and it was a death note book. I, I didn't get the reference, so 
I don't know if I'm being slow or whatever, but I didn't get it. Then up next, we've got the main event, AEW World Trios Championship, House of Black with Julia Hart versus CMFTR. Um, not CMFTR, so it's, it's Chicago made FTR. Or it's like someone said a few weeks ago, it's child molester <laughs> FTR. Oh, God damn it. A anyway, CM, whatever the CM stands for this week, he's teaming up with FTR. Out comes JR. Dun, 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 dun. Look, I understand if JR isn't able to go or if they think it's better not having JR on the full show. I understand that, and you know what? I can actually kind of accept that. But what I don't like is just having JR come out for the main event. I think they should at least bring him out on the second hour. I would at least bring him out in the second hour. But I think to just call him out just for the main event. Because it's going to disrupt the flow of the commentary. Just bring him out for the main event every single time. I would prefer if he just came out, like I said, for hour two. But whatever, he came out for the main event. The main event was pretty good, to be honest. Uh... Freeway match for the tag team trio championships. Something pissed me off though. During the Arn, during the Brock Anderson and Lucha Soda match, the match was like five seconds in, and then the commentary team notified us that Tony Khan was speaking to them and that Tony Khan had made the match for the title. And then they went to commercial break. It's like why are they doing this all the time? Tony Khan making matches in their ears. How the fuck does Tony Khan have the ability? To make a match a title match once it's already started. So Luchasaurus is facing Brock Anderson and Tony Khan's made the match a made it a title match five seconds in and they don't know that. They're too busy fighting. But the only person Tony Khan is told is the commentary team. Like the, 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 why they are doing this all the time. At first I thought it would maybe just a one off thing. But they're doing this all the time now. Something happens. Oh, oh we're hearing from Tony Khan that this is official. It's like no fucking bullshit. That stuff sucks. How can Tony Khan make a title match when the match is already underway? Garbage. Absolute garbage, right? Then we got, like I said, the main event. We had the ECM Punk and Macaulay Black sit down where they look at each other. We had Samoa Joe come out. Samoa Joe attacked CM Punk, took him out. And that allowed FTR to get battered by the House of Black. Huge lariat. By King to Dax on the inside, one, two, three, winner and still AEW trios champions, the House of Black. I mean, good main event. Samoa Joe coming out, costing CM Punk the trios championships. Surely now we're going to get Punk versus Joe at All In. It has to happen at All In. It has to be the match. Now, is it going to be for the Ring of Honor World Championship or is it going to be for CM Punk's the real? self-proclaimed world champion or, or could they do a unification match i wouldn't be surprised if they done that i would not be surprised if they unified the ring of honor and the cm punk's title since he claims to be the real world champion that might actually be a good thing to do and then you can treat the ring of honor championship as the new collision world title i think they might do that and that actually might make a bit of sense but it's aew and tony Khan doesn't make a lot of sense that probably won't happen or it could just be Joe versus Punk with no belts on the line. But that just seems dumb. Both guys have belts. At least one should be on the line. But I think it would be better if they just combined them. If they unified them. So that's what I would do. Anyway, House of Black got the win tonight. CM Punk lost thanks to Samoa Joe. How many times has CM Punk lost on Collision? I mean, I think he's lost like four times on Collision. And it's only been up like, what, nine weeks? That's fucking insane. CM Punk's a jobber on this show. Anyway, guys, it was decent. Uh, main event was good. I, I enjoyed the Christian promo. Uh, the guns are growing on me. The Ricky Starks promo at the beginning was good too. I mean, there was good stuff on this show. The matches, apart from the... Let's be real. Apart from the main event, the other matches all fucking sucked. But the, the promos were pretty good, so I'll give it credit for that. I really enjoyed Christian's promo. I enjoyed Ricky Starks' promo in the main event. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10 guys for me, that's it, catch you in the next one, Fog Wrestling, peace out, AEW Collision, best show that all elite wrestling is, it's got, and if you disagree then, I don't know what to tell you, but this is way better than Dynamite, that's it, till next time, peace.